We have yet another story about billionaire Republican donor Harlan Crow helping Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas pay for stuff. ProPublica reports that Crow paid the tuition for Thomas's grandnephew, who Thomas considers his son, and who he had legal custody of, to not one, but two boarding schools. Now, we don't know how much Crow paid, but ProPublica estimates it could be in excess of $150,000. In a statement to ProPublica, Crow said that Justice Thomas didn't ask for the money. Additionally, he told ProPublica that he has long been passionate about the importance of quality education and giving back to those less fortunate, especially at-risk youth. At-risk youth. According to a Thomas friend, Crow paid the schools directly on behalf of the justice and that Thomas was not required to disclose the tuition payments to the schools because his great nephew did not fit the definition of a dependent child under the Ethics in Government Act. Interestingly, the Thomases did not reject the payment for their grandnephew. Just to recap, Mr. Crow has reportedly paid for Clarence Thomas's private jet rides, his yacht cruises to lavish locations, and bought Thomas's mother's house, where she still lives, rent-free. At this point, Crow has allegedly dished out hundreds of thousands of dollars, nearing millions, for Thomas's personal benefit and to fund Jenny Thomas's political organizations. Thomas has repeatedly failed to report these payments. Joining me now is Richard Painter, chief White House ethics lawyer in the George W. Bush administration and professor of law at the University of Minnesota, and Jason Johnson, professor at Morgan State University, MSNBC political contributor and host of A Word with Jason Johnson podcast. Thank you both for being here, Richard. I do want to start with you because, you know, at this point, the amount of money that Harlan Crow has dished out to um, this uh, justice, you know, it, He's dishing him out like another salary. Uh, Supreme Court justices get paid a little north, I think, of $200,000 a year. He's getting that from Harlan Crow as gifts. How is that not a crime? Well, I don't know whether it's a crime, but we've reached the point in the United States where to be a real busy player in Washington, D.C., you need to have at least one Supreme Court justice in your portfolio. <laughs> and uh, what we've got going on here is uh, uh, clearly a, a, an attempt to ingratiate himself through a friendship uh, with the justice over many, many years. And whether it's buying his mother's house or paying the tuition bill, which was Justice Thomas's obligation if he chose to enroll uh, the uh, boy in a school, that was Justice Thomas's obligation if he was the uh, custodial um, the parent or the uh, he had the, was the guardian. And he had the uh, opportunity to make those decisions. Um, and then if he doesn't want to send his uh, grand nephew to a uh, public school, because for whatever reason he doesn't like the public schools, that's okay. But he needs to pay the bill. And if he doesn't pay the bill and Mr. Crow pays it for him, well, then that's just a gift to Justice Thomas. It goes right on the disclosure form. Uh, and I dealt with this in the White House uh, under President Bush. I uh, told people very clearly, if somebody pays your kid's tuition at a school, Oh, that's a gift to you. Just put it on the disclosure form. And if they're a lobbyist, uh, we're going to get you fired. Uh, I mean, if you don't put it on the disclosure form, uh, you could commit a crime because uh, if you file a false disclosure form, that's a false statement. Uh, false statements, uh, intentional false statements uh, to the government can be prosecuted under 18 United States Code 1001, the false statement statute, the same statute that Robert Mueller went after quite a few people on. So, uh, this needed to be disclosed. I mean, it's a slam dunk. This was an obligation of the uh, justice who made the decision to put his nephew in this uh, private school. He uh, had uh, the legal guardianship, the authority to make that decision, and the responsibility to pay the cost that came along with it. You know, Jason, I'm struck by the term at-risk youth. Because I find it hard to uh, imagine that someone being raised by a Supreme Court justice who is flying all over the world and going on, uh, just, you know, expensive yachts uh, and dining with people like Harlan Crow, maybe in his Garden of Evil, um, is an at-risk youth, right? That doesn't sound like an at-risk youth. And I'm just going to read what Julie Ayafi tweeted. She said, once again, I ask you to imagine what would happen if instead of Clarence Thomas, this were happening with Sonia Sotomayor and the billionaire weren't Harlan and Crow. It was George Soros. Dream with me, Jason. What would that be like? Oh, well, everybody from Jim Jordan to Mitch McConnell would be screaming for her head. People would be protesting outside of their house. But, but this is the thing, Joy. This is what makes this particularly disgusting. We already know he's corrupt. We already know he's bought. We already know the same thing is happening with John Roberts and his wife doing lawyer recruiting. We know that, that, that there's money in the pockets of all these people. 
But we talked about this before when Harlan Crow was first revealed to be the bad guy behind the camera, the Bond villain, whatever. It's one thing to take Clarence Thomas on expensive trips. Because from an ethical standpoint, Thomas could have said at some point, hey, I don't want to take trips anymore. But once you are paying for my mama's house, and once you are paying for my son to go to school, you can't tell this man no anymore. Harlan Crow is literally has his hands up Clarence Thomas like a puppet. And the idea that anyone could even remotely pretend that Clarence Thomas was his own man on the court when this is happening, it's absolutely impossible. Every single Democrat, besides Ocasio-Cortez, every single Democrat should be screaming to get Clarence Thomas to get off the bench, to talk about the inherent corruption that we've got on the Supreme Court right now, because this is not going to be the last reveal, Joy, because as we saw in the ProPublica article, um, his, his grandnephew's son said, oh, by the way, we took a trip to the Baltics. There's other <laughs> trips coming that we yeah. probably haven't heard it about yet. I'm just waiting to find out that he, like, paid for colonoscopy surgery, something <laughs> else like that, because clearly Harlan Crow runs that entire family. Oh, him owning an organ of his would be even uh, perfect. Um, this is what Ron Wyden, the chairman of the Finance Committee, tweeted. He said he's, he's pushing for answers. He said that he wants Crow to answer uh, questions. He wants them by May 8th. If he doesn't comply, I will absolutely explore other tools at the Finance Committee's disposal to shed more light on what appears to be blatant corruption. I don't know what those things would be, but I think to that point, Richard, it almost doesn't matter if Crow specifically had cases before the court. He's a big donor to Republicans like Greg Abbott, who banned abortion in his state. He's a big co-founder. He's a co-founder of Club for Growth, which has gotten all of its asks um, from Citizens United on on this court. In the past three decades, they publicly contributed $14.7 million to federal and state candidates and candidate committees. At least three, 13 million of the 14 went to Republicans. They're getting Republican outcomes. It doesn't need to be specific cases, right? And let's go back to Scalia. Justice Scalia, when he died, he literally was staying for free at a West Texas hunting lodge owned by a business person whose company had recently had a matter before the Supreme Court. Is this not just simple corruption that Clarence Thomas learned from Scalia and is now practicing it for himself and his family? This has been going on in this court uh, for quite some time. And uh, at least we have the Ethics and Government Act, which requires disclosure of these gifts. And it's a law, and they need to comply with the law. And if we didn't have one of the liberal justices do this, I can guarantee you that uh, Jim Jordan would have had him impeached in the House this morning, and they'd be walking the articles of impeachment over to the Senate right now as we speak. Uh, and uh, the same standard should apply to everybody. Uh, this is unacceptable. We've never had uh, something this is serious on the Supreme Court with a single justice receiving that many uh, uh, gifts, uh, yeah. undisclosed from the same person. Uh, this dwarfs by far the incident with Justice Fortas in 1969, uh, where he was persuaded to resign from the court because of a, a single payment from a businessman uh, that he actually returned as soon as that businessman was indicted. Uh, and yet he was still forced off the court, and the Democrats wouldn't support him in the U.S. Congress, even though they knew that would give Nixon an extra seat uh, right. nomination on the U.S. Supreme Court. But we've come a long way since the more bipartisan attitudes of the late 60s and early 70s, and everyone's just going to dig their heels in and focus on, does he agree with me on abortion or not, instead of focusing on ethics. And i got to say, when it comes to ethics, uh, this Supreme Court is like an out-of-control fraternity. It's an animal house uh, of yeah. ethics. Uh, without the college dean, who's there to throw them all out. And uh, the uh, yeah. uh, Congress uh, has that uh, ability under the impeachment clause of the Constitution, but they're not going to use it. If they wouldn't throw out a president and impeach and convict a president who can yeah. uh, inspire an insurrection, what are they going to do about this? Nothing.